All right, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna do a little inside baseball, if you will. There's a few cameras I've been shooting with lately that I really like, and I don't really have enough to maybe talk about them in like their own video. So I thought I would just be like, lay them out here and be like, hey, these are what, this is what I like, this is why, and you know, maybe you should try them out. They're a little bit less popular too. So my hope is that, you know, you can find a good deal online, maybe try one out for yourself. The flip side of that is because they're less popular, if you do end up getting one, reselling them might be a little bit more of a challenge, but you know, at the very least, I've also picked in my mind a few that I think are nice enough to look at that you can like display them so even if you don't like them and don't like using them they're you know still good for display purposes anyway this is uh yeah <laughs> so we'll start off with one that i just got some results back on and it is the canon demi ee17 now contrary to what i literally just said uh, I do plan on maybe making a video about this in the future because I really like this camera a lot, uh, especially once I got the advanced lever situation figured out. Um, the washers go in a very weird orientation. I took it apart to clean it, didn't remember how it went back together, so this was like super floppy. And once I got that fixed though, this thing just fills me with confidence to use. It's a really nice, solid build. It's kind of a smaller version of a Canonette. It's such a well-built, well-designed, and really compact camera system. Now it's a half frame, 30 millimeter 1.7, so roughly like 60 millimeter and 2.8-ish thereabouts. So fairly fast, and 60 millimeters is fine, I think for most applications has a flash sync port here no hot shoe but i kind of like that and it, you know what i'll make a whole video on it it's metal so it's a little bit heavier but it's very well built like i said really sharp optics in there which is great if you're shooting half frame i just got some film back from it like i said and i really can't wait to put another roll in so that is the first one the canon demi ee17 this one might be a little bit more expensive, and because they look the way they look, a lot of people like them, so you should be able to resell one if you get one, try it out and don't like it. So that's kind of a nice thing to think about as well. But in my mind, this is one of the best little travel cameras out there. It's again, super compact, super easy to use, and it just, it feels good. It's one of those cameras that once I got this fixed, like I was excited to pull it out of my bag and shoot with. And it just, I don't know, it's nice. It's a nice little travel camera. It reminds me of like the 60s. So that's cool there. We have this. I I never talk about these. I, I never really talk about these, except for when I got this one, which was uh, in a previous video, the KEH video. I received this ME and it just, it worked, which was nice. Uh, I shot a roll through it and the roll came out. So we're, we're cool in the gang on that front. To kind of explain why I like this camera, I'm gonna have to grab this little booklet here. Um, this to me, this is one of my favorite booklets of all time. I think the design of it's fantastic. And basically I got this and I learned a lot about these two systems. Now bear in mind, I am, not very old. I am like physically my body's deteriorating as we speak, but mentally and like in however you want to measure time, I'm not that old. So I wasn't around for these being released, but it wasn't until I got this book that I realized that these were kind of released in tandem. The MX, one of my favorite cameras, and the ME. Now the ME in my mind was always kind of like the the lame version of the ME Super. It's not, it's not a super camera. Why would I want the ME? And even though the ME Super was not a very popular, and still to this degree isn't very popular system, like you can get one online for not a lot of money, the ME was even less popular. So again, from my approach of 
my old job and my kind of current job of flipping cameras or whatever, I'm looking at things in terms of not only their ease of uh, repair, but also their resale value. And if something like this is, you know, relatively easy to repair, but can't be sold for much, then why would I really waste my time on it? So something on Emmy Super is a little bit different because they're really solid cameras and the resale value is there. This wasn't really the same, but upon reading this, kind of seeing that they came out at around the same time and the functionality of this system, I think kind of more lines up with how I like to use the Emmy Super. Many of you may know, I don't really take the Emmy Super off of auto ever uh, because I am, oh, what's the word, not a good photographer. So something like this, where you're limited to just the auto setting, it has the flash sync speed of one one hundredth of a second and then your bulb setting as well. I think it really just simplifies the options of your photography. It makes it a lot of a more streamlined experience. And with using this, I, I really just enjoyed the experience. I thought it was very similar to the Emmy Super, but just in a little bit more simplified manner. It does cap out at a one one thousandth of a second shutter speed, unlike the one two thousandth of a second shutter speed of the Emmy Super. So there's a limitation there. But overall, these things still don't really go for a whole lot. And if you want to get a super compact SLR system, there are very few options that are better than a Pentax ME. I really dig it. And uh, I think you will too. This booklet, like I mentioned, just has like a lot of fun little features on it. Um, just helpful advice and stuff like that. It's a little bit more basic, a little bit more humdrum. But it just, again, when when people take time and care to like put these together it does really help me have a better sense of appreciation for this and i think seeing kind of the timeline of things bolsters its um, position in my mind a little bit more so than it did previously where it's just like yeah it's just a fucking uh, cheap version of an emmy super why would i want this so pentax emmy I don't talk about them enough, but I really do like them. And again, this was one I could probably make another video about, and I might, but for now, just a little quick tip, Pentax Emmy. All right, now moving on to kind of a, a juicier selection. Uh, one that I'm not really sure how I want to bring up, so I'm just gonna bring it up, okay? Focus, we're focused. A Miranda. So, um, this is a Miranda camera, okay? I think these are gorgeous. I, I think this is a really good looking camera overall. I got a shout out first off, one of my Bronco buddies, and then also somebody I met on eBay. I sold him something, fixed one of his cameras, and then he had this lens for me. Uh, Brennan, thank you, dude, appreciate you. I hope you're doing well. It has a very weird lens mount. The lens that came with this camera belongs in just the trash, really, and I think that's where it ended up. So this is a nice little 50 millimeter 1.9, so fairly fast. The focus screen on here, about as clear as a foggy day. It's it's terrible. Overall, the construction of this is very solid. It's a very kind of, it's a big, big camera, okay? It's a, but I love it, okay, I really do, because it is just a, it's a nice looking camera in my mind, like it just, it just looks good to me, I don't know what it is about it, but you have your detachable prism here, which is nice, you have uh, very limited, very, very limited amount of shutter speeds here, from 500 all the way down to 60. There is a bulb, so that's cool. But uh, that's about it, that's all you got. You have kind of a very strange uh, system here for your frame counter. You have to like manually reset it. Um, and then it will kind of advance every time you wind. So that's kind of nice there. This little tab of red though, maroon, I think looks really cool. 
I think mine might be a little bit broken if I'm completely honest with you. I feel like this ASA thing should be a little bit more static than it is, but that's okay. I'm not too concerned about it. The ASA memo thing itself, I really like because it shows you, you know, you have the options if you're shooting tungsten color film, what speed it is, or uh, daylight, cold film, I guess, in this manner, uh, black and white film, all of those things. That's kind of cool there. Inside here, again, there, there's not really a great usage of space. I mean, this is just like a 50s, 60s Cadillacs that are just massive. That's kind of what this interior reminds me of. It's huge. But again, I still really like it. It has this nice um, ovular grip system to it. You can see it, it has very rounded out edges. It's just, it's it's kind of easy to hold on to, even though it's big. I think it fits well in the hand. And this is, I think to date, one of the only camera systems with this front shutter release button that I actually really like. You know, I've, I've shot with a few, there's the Practicas, the Kievs. Some of the feds, I believe, have this like front shutter release and I've never been a big fan of it, but there's something about holding this camera like this. You know, if you put everything back on it. This just feels really easy to do. And I like that. It's just a very ergonomic thing. These don't go for a whole lot. They are all mechanical cameras. There's really not a whole lot that can go wrong with them outside of like the typical shutter drying out, needing to be cleaned out and stuff. But despite that, they're really nice. And I might be in the minority on this opinion, but I think it's a really good looking camera. And even when I'm not using this, I like to just have it out because I think it looks good. I think it looks like a very classic camera and it's not common enough to like the old Spotmatics or the Nikons or Minolta's. It's a unique little twist on a classic camera design. And then this one is another kind of weird one that I need to put a little asterisk out there. It's a bit more of a broad uh, thing than just this one that I'm going to show you, but bear with me. <laughs> of course, the Vivitar Tech 45. World renowned for its just its quality, its craftsmanship, the construction itself is just it's it's hard to find a better system than the Vivitar Tech 45. Now that I'm done with that, this is a kind of shitty little point and shoot. Vivitar was making flashes that look almost identical to this with the blue font selection there. Same kind of plastic, plastic -y materials. Their lenses are also kind of renowned for their kind of quality, kind of lack of quality, and their innate ability to collect and harvest fungus. But this is representing a larger group of cameras, and that is the point and shoot. Now, I have been on the record many times as saying, I like point and shoots, pause, that are affordable, that are reasonable, that aren't a hundred plus dollars, okay? I like point and shoots that are free, and that's what this was. This was a free point and shoot. I think that's great. There was a time Let's see, 20, that would have been 20, early, early 2019, late 2018, where I would just go to Goodwill a bunch of times, pick up a bunch of point and shoots and give them to people. It was just like, hey, have, have a camera. That was like my thing. Hey, you're going on a little trip, have a camera. It was great. Uh, I got them for like five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, maybe. And I used to just like, I had buckets of them. I still have buckets of point and shoots, but I had like buckets of them that they all worked and I would just give them out and people would use them and then all this good stuff. It was great. I loved it. It's such a fun communal thing. Now, uh, there is uh, a very different mindset to point and shoots, to film cameras in general. Something like this free Vivitar Tech 45 
doesn't really qualify because it's not the Canons, it's not the Nikons, it's not the name brand ones. So the value isn't there. So it's kind of deemed as lesser. However, however, if they work and if it's a reasonable rate, then why not throw a roll of Pro Image 100 or Color Plus or Ultramax, what have you in there and just have fun. Like that's, that is a, an option for you. <laughs> I think they're great for that reason, um, especially the plasticky ones like this, where you know it can probably take a little bit of a beating. It's not going to be the worst thing in the world. Overall, really solid cameras. Big fan, and I, I wanted to talk about it again because I feel like point and shoots are something that I'm, I'm always kind of thinking about, and I always have some kind of relationship with them, whether it's remembering like giving them people or taking one out and using it and then remembering all the times that I've spoken in videos about how much I don't like using them. Um, every now and again, I'll find one that I really like. Ultimately with point and shoots, I've just found that the less money you spend, the lower your expectation is and the easier it is to ultimately accept its inevitable demise because that's just, that's what these are. Vivitar in my mind, probably a great company run by great people no no bones about that but this camera is a few years past its expiration date so the fact that it even works is a miracle and you just take whatever time i have with it as borrowed time and appreciate it for what it is and not really expect excellence out of it nor would i expect to buy it for excellent prices so if you're gonna get a point and shoot, I would say get a cheap one like this or just get like the M35 or the Sprite or whatever 35 millimeter, 38, 3.5 plastic lens, reusable disposable camera is. Just do one of those instead. All right, so this is it. These are the cameras that I think are a little bit underrated that I've kind of been shooting with lately or just wanted to talk about but didn't have enough content for their own videos so have you shot with any of these uh which one do you like which one do you not like and please feel free to share those opinions in the comments below i hope that you learned something go out there if you need to get a film camera uh, look at some of these first i think this kind of covers a lot of bases half frame travel camera, cheap point and shoots, fully automatic, affordable entry level SLR, fully mechanical, really affordable entry level SLR. Boom, look at that, fucking right on the money. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.